Traffic Jam is on now. Hey, how you doing? Kenny Williams here. I'm the host of Traffic Jam, and I've got our guest for today from Mad TV, and you remember him from Jerry Maguire. What's up there, brother? How you doing, bro? I'm doing good. Question, it's always been a question of mine, and I've been knowing you for years. Um, Aries, is that from the sign or family member? Um... I think it might be uh, both. Um, I, I really don't know why my mother chose that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I was I was born in seventy five, so she might have been on that shit. <laughs> are you Are you an Aries? Yeah, April third. April third. Okay, okay. My brother's an uh, Aries, also. What have you? Okay, okay. So yeah, you, yeah. <laughs> so you started. So you're from Jersey, but you started with what's always amazing, like um, cats like Dave Chappelle, um, even Cool Bubba Ice was like a young, you started like at 14. How would you be able to move around? Like Dave, Dave gave his flowers to Tony Woods and he was like, he was able to take him to clubs. Who who was able to send you, like take you to different clubs and get you um, on stage? My mother. Uh, you know, she would drive me all to all the clubs. And, you know, at that time, the clubs, it was the black clubs, which was the only clubs for us. Um, Terminal D in Newark, Peppermint Lounge and East wow. Orange in New Jersey. Uh, 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 Club 88 in East Orange, New Jersey. So she took me to a lot of those clubs because, you know, I wasn't allowed to be in there by myself. So she would come <laughs> uh-huh. bring me in. You know, we 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 hang out in the makeshift green room when I and I had to stay like a prisoner in his cell till they <laughs> announced my name, and then I come out and do my thing, and then we bounce. Oh, you could so you are you so you didn't really get to read like who was going up in front of you, like you had to wait there before you went up. I mean, I would I would I would they would allow me to you know as long as my mother was by my side, like they would they oh, okay. would allow me to glance around, check and see, but. Yeah, for the first, from 14 to about, shit, 19, yes, 19, uh, it was tough. Okay. And so at what age, so you did the, you went from Jersey to L.A. At what age did you do, uh, go over to L.A.? Uh, when I was like, between, it's between 17 and 18. 17 and 18? So yeah. was it the same situation, like who helped you out over there on the, the West Coast? Well, when, even when I got to the West Coast, I, I really didn't start getting on stage regularly. Uh, I became a regular at the comedy store. I really didn't start getting on stage till I was about 19, 20. So uh, a lot of times I couldn't even go to the comedy clubs. Okay, 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 okay. So this is um, one of the questions, and I've and I seen your, your uh, clip, um, well, your, your uh, special. Hollywood, look at me, I'm smiling, mm-hmm. right? Why did you come up with that title? Well, because, you know, there's this perception by, by Hollywood, and by Hollywood, I mean white folks, that uh, unless you, you know, unless you grinning and from temple to temple and you doing jazz hands, if, if, you don't, if you're not smiling, you're angry. You're angry. Uh, you're, you're the angry black man. You're to be feared. And, you know, motherfuckers don't walk around all day cheesing. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm you know, and, and a lot of comics are the opposite of their perceived persona. People think because we comedians, we, we cracking jokes all day. And, and there's some that do that. And but the most motherfuckers that do that ain't that funny. You know, yeah. it's, it's you don't pull out your weapon till it's time to shoot. So yeah. most of us are reserved, quiet. But, you know, when you're black and you're reserved and you're black and you're aloof, it's, it's looked at as, uh-oh, he's angry. He got an attitude. And, and it was like, you know, the title is in the sarcasm. Hollywood, look, I'm smiling. I'm that nigga you want me to be. And I'm in blackface even. How more acceptable can I be? <laughs> so that's what that was. Did you get any rip? I know that for the, the, the cover, like, did anyone go, come on, Aries, man, don't do the black face? Um, most people got it. 
Uh, uh-huh. I remember when I did a, a big press junket where, you know, you do this thing where <clears throat> my publicist would have me get up before the sun came up because I'm on the West Coast. So a lot of the press shit was on the East Coast. So to, to make it work, I had to get up early and you just sit on your phone one after the other after the other. And you just do a bunch of press junkets, radio interviews, magazine interviews. And I remember, uh, I'm not sure if J. Anthony, I, I, don't, I don't think J. I can't remember what station J. Anthony Brown was at at the time. This was before Steve Harvey. But he saw the cover and was like, dog, what, what, are, you, what are you doing? Like, he didn't understand where I was coming from. But then when I explained it to him, he got it. But the funny part to me was, I remember when we did the photo shoot for the cover and they put me in a blackface and we down like towards Venice Beach. So, you know, I'm outside smoking a cigarette and this one brother rolls by this car and he looks and goes, what the fuck? So that was, that was funny. <laughs> You're watching The Traffic Jam. When I was going through, like, and I know during this quarantine, we watching a whole bunch of uh, movies, and I just thought of you. Um, and I think I thought of you because of, because um, you co-starred with Regina King, the the uh, Netflix One Night in Miami. What's your take? Right. What's your take on one? Did you watch it? I did. Um, first, shout out to Regina King. Anytime you got a black woman in, in such a, 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 an industry where it's not only racist, but sexist. Mm-hmm. So anytime you got a black woman that's making strides, hats off to her. Um, I thought it was a cool movie, um, but you know, you have, to, you, you have to invest in the characters. And it's, it, I, I'm a little, I'm probably a little more hard than most people because I'm going, when I'm looking at the portrayal of Muhammad Ali, I'm looking at, I got to make comparisons because I do voices. So I'm comparing his Muhammad Ali to Ali's Ali to Darius McRae's Ali to actually Ali in his own biopic called Ali. Okay. Um, so I, I had a hard time going eh, in terms of who measures up. And then again, Malcolm X, I got to compare you to Denzel. And that's a hard shoe to fill. So, you know, I thought the dude playing Sam Cooke was excellent, but we'd never seen Sam Cooke portrayed before. So whatever rendition that was, we would either go with it or not. And I, and I thought from the look to the portrayal, it was excellent. Overall, I thought it was cool. Um, I just get caught up sometimes on the, on, the, on the character portrayals, especially when it's other people with voices and sound. So was that the same thing even with Jim Brown? I thought uh, Idris, his name is Idris Hodge, because I love him in that show, that new show, City on a Hill, on Showtime. He's, he's, he's great in that. I thought he was a little too tall for Jim Brown, uh-huh. um, but he's, he still, ha- he, he did a good job as far as that stoic cadence that Jim Brown has, where he doesn't talk much, never too high on emotion, never too low. He's what he is. Okay. Okay. So you do it. So you do like is like a, a thousand. What characters? Because a lot of times people put what characters. What are your favorite characters? What character like from that you really just just have fun doing? Probably Paul Mooney. Uh, Paul. Yes. It, listen. <laughs> first, of, first of all, anything rather new is always the shiny toy. So uh-huh. uh, the fact that I just started doing. James Gandolfini, a.k.a. Tony Soprano, is one. But Paul is particularly fun because, you know, it's, it's one thing to do the impression. It's another thing to say things they would say. It's like yes. if you could do a Biggie impression, that's great. But can you spit like Biggie? Can you yes. get his cadence, his flow, his rhythm, and have people go, that's something Biggie would say. So the complexity and the challenge of doing Mooney past the, the impression, like actually saying shit, you would go, that's a Paul Mooney written shit is what's fun for me. Yes, yes. Because a lot of times they would have like a lot of clips, your YouTube, they would have you do Shaq, something like this. Don't seem like that's like, I don't know, from the outside looking in, like, is that one of the fun characters? Like so a lot of times they'll just 
Hey, do Shaq, you know. Um, yeah, it's, it's it's fun, but it ain't a challenge, you uh-huh. know, because Shaq is real basic. You know what I mean? You all you gotta do is to say twenty eight ten. As long as I get twenty eight ten, I'm gonna dominate. Those are my numbers twenty eight. If you don't get twenty eight ten, you can't dominate. So, but Mooney is that Mooney pushes the edge in terms of race, in terms of things that make you feel uncomfortable, but based in truth. So when you can do that, that's a little bit more fun for me. Hey, what's up? It's your girl, Ida Rodriguez, at Funny Ida, and you are watching Traffic Jam. Let's go. What part of Jersey are you from? Well, actually, I'm from New York, but I lived in Jersey. I grew up in Manhattan, West Side, uh, but then I oh, eventually okay. moved to Jersey, and I lived in North Brunswick. North Brunswick. And where's Shaq from? Shaq is from? Newark. He's from Newark. Newark. Yeah. Newark. 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 Yeah. Newark. I think he was in the clubs, uh, Terminal D's, like, in coming up. Um, well, I, I, I never saw him in Terminal D, but, uh, hell, I never even seen him in Jersey. But there was such a difference in terms of when I got to where I was and where he was in his career. First time I met Shaq was at a club in L.A. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Did he say anything about, did you do, did you do the Shaq tour with them, or you just did one um, I did a couple of dates. Um, Shaq did two episodes of Mad TV. Uh, and then, you know, from there, he, he really became a fan. And then, uh, of course, I did the first Shaq's All-Star Comedy Jam with me, D. Ray Davis, Tommy Davidson, Kevin Hart, and Shaq, which I proudly am, you know, most people regard that as the best one ever. Because uh, we came out the gates with All-Stars, man. Hard. Yeah. 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 So let's do this. Um, we got to do the top five, right? Um, give me your top five sports. Go up, goats. Don't have to be basketball. Folk. What are your top five sports goats? Um, Michael Jordan, Muhammad Ali, Mike Tyson. Um, God, any, 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 any of these last two could be interchangeable because I'm not really a football guy um, or ba- I, my main sports is basketball and boxing. Um, okay. Shit. I guess if you had to fill the last two spots, um, probably say Kareem and then uh, Sugar Ray Leonard. Sugar Ray Leonard. Okay. But, if I had, but if I had to do the political correct thing, and stick a white boy and a woman in there, I would probably <laughs> say Larry Bird and then um, Serena Williams. Okay. You know, it was, you know what's crazy? When we speak of the GOAT, and I just had this come, no one puts any women in any of these GOAT situations, and I, I believe that Serena, she deserves it. <laughs> We're, we're better than them. We're better than them. You put the worst man up against the best woman. No, we're but, damn near but, better than them. You're watching the Traffic Jam. Listen, man, people often go, why are black people so much better at sports than white people? No. I don't think it has anything to do with a genetic makeup as much as it is a need. When you put people up against the wall, Mm -hmm. and you're faced with poverty or or a better life, there's a different hunger that propels you forward. Listen, if money, if rock climbing paid what the NBA paid, niggas would dominate rock climbing. You know what I mean? We, we, we We would dominate bull riding and everything else there is because our need for survival is much deeper than theirs. I'm not saying they don't do it out of love. We all do it out of love of the game. But we also do it out of necessity. And when yes. it comes to necessity, their necessity is not our necessity. We are do or die. We either eat or we die. Okay. So, yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, top five hip hop. I say hip hop. <laughs> Being real, I say top, top five hip hop. If, if, if there are any young kids listening to this, log off now. 
because I'm not going to name your mother. I'm not going to name your dudes. I'm not going to name anybody with a lil. I'm not. No. Um, Jay-Z, Biggie, Nas, Jada Kiss, Eminem. Okay. I got to throw this up. There's a little, um, I think it was Chris Rock. You know, he came up with the top five. He says he can't put Biggie in there because of the catalog. Because he wasn't, it wasn't long enough. Yeah. Okay, listen, I don't believe you have to show a long catalog if you show what you were able to do in the short time you did it. Biggie was so nasty. You really mean to tell me that that nigga was still alive? You think he'd what, put out a dud? Like he showed you what he could do between Ready to Die and uh, what was the second one called? Life After Death. He showed you. I don't need to see you go 15 albums to know that you belong on the Mount Rushmore. So all that means is if he lived, he would be doing damage still. So so hold up, let's go back. You said Jay-Z, Nas, Biggie, Nod, Jadakiss, Jadakiss, and Eminem. You don't put Rock Cam? This is just, you know, I'm not trying to change your list. Everyone got their list, but I, I'm just the 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 black leather the black leather glove in me uh-huh. says I'm supposed to put Rock Kim. It says I'm supposed to put KRS one, but Eminem, Larry Bird, man, Eminem, Larry Bird. You know, Rock Kim, the God. I'm, I I love him, but Eminem is Larry Bird, man. Okay, okay, all right. This is uh the field you're in, top five. Comedians. I do this in two parts. Um, I don't count because there's two levels to me. There's the Mount Rushmore and then there's the Mount Olympus, the gods. The gods look down on the Mount Rushmore. So the Mount Olympus is Eddie Murphy, Richard Pryor, uh, Bill Cosby, Red Fox, um, Who gets that fifth spot? But let me go back. While you're thinking of that, I'm going to let you finish the five. I got to say Moms go- Mabley, because she was a pioneer. Okay. That's the gods. The Mount- That's the gods. Now, the current, uh, the late, great Patrice O'Neill, Dave Chappelle, Bill Burr, Tommy Davidson. Um, who would I give that fifth spot to? Despite the beef, Corey Holcomb. Okay. Okay. Let's go back to the gods. I'm going to get back to um, the mere mortals. You put, is the same argument as far as Eddie Murphy. Um, as far as, now I say, I say comedy, but I meant stand up. Does he, is that same rule just like Biggie because he didn't have a catalog as far as stand up specials? Here's what validates Eddie. Uh-huh. Do you know how hard it is to have a career that spawns decades? Mm-hmm. Decades. Like, like Eddie Murphy from the 80s till now is still the dude. Now, I know he's comedy, but if we put it in dramatic form, Tom Cruise, Jack Nicholson, Al Pacino, Denzel, these dudes, decades. Eddie Murphy's the only black comedian decades. And he didn't just do stand up, he transcended everything movies, TV, SNL. He was a killer. Stand up, a killer. Um, the only weak spot I give him is musically. You're not going to convince me to put your mouth on me. And if I was a king, make him a singer. <laughs> Jamie Foxx sings, nigga. Uh, Eddie sings. Jamie sings. <laughs> but that's to me the only weak blemish on Eddie's record <laughs> musically. But comedically, that nigga has transcended levels. So he's got to be. Okay. 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 What's up? It's your boy, comedian A.G. White. Not so white, not white now. And you are watching The Traffic Jam. Jam. 
So let's talk about endurance training. So endurance is a type of training that involves a specific type of your muscle groups i.e. your type one muscle fibers, which just basically means the muscle fibers that are built for lasting activities, things like the muscle fibers you find in your calves. Also, when we're talking about cardio and we're talking about cardio endurance, these are gonna be your cardio activities that are gonna last longer than two minutes. So we're talking marathons, long walks, um, any sort of activity that lasts more than two minutes pretty easy. Now, it is very important to work on your endurance, again, just for overall cardio health and for working that different type of muscle fiber that you have. And so you can work on it in two different forms, either with doing cardio or with weight training, depending on if you're trying to work on your muscular endurance or the cardio endurance, which is your heart. So really common, great endurance exercises for cardio are going to be things like long runs, jogs, uh, swimming, bike riding. Um, you can even do dance class that will work on your endurance, but it's more in intervals, I would say. Um, hiking is a really great way to also improve your endurance. And then when we're talking about weightlifting in particular, if you're trying to work on endurance, you're going to do more repetitions in a set. So you're going to be doing 15 to 30 repetitions even, or working out in 30 seconds and above if you're not taking any breaks. Um, also doing lighter weights, you're gonna also be doing more sets. So maybe doing two to 10 sets perhaps to work on endurance. So that is a way to really train your endurance muscles when it comes to your muscles, increasing the repetition, decreasing the weight and the rest time, and also increasing the overall amount of reps that you're doing. So that's a little bit about endurance. <laughs> hey, I salute you, man. Hey, pleasure sitting down with you, man. And thank you for coming on the show. And thank you for your time. Appreciate your time. And man. do me a favor, man. Uh, give my apologies to him, man, because I know he had been trying to lock this down, but my schedule's been so hectic. But tell that nigga with the shiny lips, Thank you. This is the Traffic Jam.